Hello guys and welcome to Trumpet with an Eye and welcome to this week's episode of TLDR where we give you the gaming and gadgeting news that you can use to make your life useful. <gasps> so going back a day now or two, uh, big news, Pirate Bay is now back online. So in case of those who didn't know, Pirate Bay, which is widely known for the, being the most popular file sharing website on the planet, um, is back online after its longest outage it ever experienced of it being out for two months. So anyone visiting the Pirate Bay website will be welcomed with a functioning site. It's as if as nothing has happened in more than two months. So what happened was on December 9th, police in Stockholm raided a data center and they seized the servers and the computer equipment in the Pirate Bay was... Their ship sank. Because the Pirate Bay was down for so long, many copycat websites such <laughs> as the old Pirate Bay. There's also fighting within the staff because apparently it's a relaunch. Most staff aren't relaunching it because it was supposed to be a trimmed down version and that doesn't require, yeah. That doesn't require former admins and it's, it's complicated. I'll leave you guys to do some more research if you want to. After all, all I'm doing is giving you the headline news of this week. Something really interesting for those people who love to use Google Earth and not, not Google Maps. You can now, for the first time, purchase, I mean, claim Google Earth Pro for $399, which was $399, for completely free now. For those people who want to professionally look at maps. What can you do? Well, you can print images at 4th. 4800 by 32, the non-pros capped at 1000. With a professional version of Google Earth, you can automatically import a few thousand addresses at once. Oh my god, so good. Capture HD videos of what's happening on the screen because people can't just download um, screen capture devices or even like fraps. You can now measure distances and areas using lines, paths, polygons, circles and more. Non-pro one before, can only handle lines and parts. So now, we're gonna get all these added bonuses for free now. It's sad to think someone paid $399 to get the professional version of Google Earth. Guys, <laughs> you're just using a normal version of Google Earth? Look at me, I've got my professional version. Apple stores are to be outfitted with saves to house their new gold Apple Watch, Apple Watch edition gold, but <laughs> gold ones. So basically, because these things are expensive and they're made out of gold, they're gonna have to take the same procedures as they would normally um, in a normal jewelry shop because, well, basically they're selling jewelry. 1.84 million new 3DS units shipped in 2014 and 9.2 million Wii U the units shipped in 2014. So apparently, this is actually quite good news, my friend told me about this, is that there's a new 3DS loophole which allows you to play any Game Boy Color ROM you want on your Nintendo 3DS console. Now, you got to keep in mind, for this to work, you must have a normal 3DS or a 3DS XL, I'm, I'm guessing 2DS because they're the same thing, but you cannot have a new 3DS with a C-Stick. So how it works is basically you have to firstly purchase a random game, a random Game Boy Color game from the eShop. Secondly, you need to launch this game, when you click the home button, close the game. You go to your home browser, you type in the ROM you want, you click download, it does this weird error system, and then you go to your ROM and you it loads it up, it's really weird. So you can now play Pokemon! Oh, and you can actually fully close the app, you, like, you don't need to keep it running, it even saves. Even if you shut down your DS, every time you shut down your DS you've got to redo the hack, because it, it's, it's, uh, it's untethered. It's tethered right now, sort of. No, it's not tethered. It's you gotta relaunch the hack. So you gotta you gotta do the browser thing. And even if you've shut down the DS, you can reload your game. Now keep in mind, you do have to have some special files which you download uh, onto your SD card. You plug them in, then you put the program there. Then it, you need Windows, you, not with Mac. Have I done this? No. Has my friend done it? Yes. Has he shown me? Yes. Does it work? Yes. If you got a new 3DS, this won't work. If you got a normal 3DS XL or normal or 2DS, it will work. So look into it. Just type in 3DS browser exploit Game Boy Color. Yes. So Sega has released its new teaser trailer for Sonic the Hedge. Um, oh, Sonic Runners. It's a it's a it's a game for your Android or iOS device. It's free to play. It's a 2D side scrolling. It's gonna be so much better than the stupid swipey one they have. Oh my god, that was so. Bad. And the All Stars Racing was okay. That actually, no, that's actually pretty good. So what they said here is Sonic moves forward automatically, and players need to tap the touch screen to make him jump. Sonic uh, Sonic Runners, you can complete a level in one minute or two, so it's good for training. Um, train is in like choo choo. So Sonic Runners will feature some familiar gameplay mechanics like ring collection and stages of loops, confronting the Doctor Robot Robot Nick Robotnik, and you get unlockable characters such as Tails and Knuckles. 
So here's a Dying Light review from IGN. No description. Full stop. It's a very thick full stop. EA has revealed its minimum specs required for its new game coming out called Battlefield Hardline. So basically if your computer's got anything less than 4 gigabytes of RAM, you're stuffed. Here's a quote. Gameplay performance for lower NPCs is still being optimized. So here are their minimum specs. You need Windows Vista Service Package 2, 64-bit, with a KB971512 update. I have no idea what that is. And your CPU, you need an Intel i3 or i5 2.4 gigahertz. That says nothing. Sorry, but you can't measure a CPU by its gigahertz. It's like saying, look, my car can go 5,000 revs, but yours can only do 3,000 revs. Mine's more faster than yours, and like the one that can do 5,000 revs is like some sort of weird Volkswagen. Volkswagen. And the one that can do 3,000 revs is like a freaking V8 Ferrari. Like, you know? You, it's, it's the same thing. You cannot compare the revs, or in this case, the, the cycle speed, of processors. It's so stupid. You need a graphics card and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 260, 896 megabytes. Uh, you need 60 gigabytes of space. Shit. Back in my day, Halo took up one gigabyte and we're like, oh no, there goes my 20 gigabyte hard drive. Here are the recommended PC specs. So they say Windows 8 because they're trying to promote that because everyone knows it's failing, but just get Windows 10. Like last week's episode. So you want an Intel quad core CPU? That's as specific as saying, I want a car with an engine, preferably four wheels. <laughs> so you need eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, that's really interesting how gaming machines are starting to require more RAM because the games actually don't need a lot of RAM. You need a lot of RAMs for video editing. And yeah, this, this computer has, has sh RAM. So they say you want an NVIDIA GeForce GDX 760 card. You want three gigabytes of graphics card memory. Hard drive, okay, it's hard drive the same. So yes. Very, yes. So lots of games got very good trailers at the Super Bowl. So yeah, so Clash of Clans got a really good up, uh, got a really good ad. So did um, Game of War, and they got very famous actors to play, and it's actually quite funny. So um, you guys will like them. Lots of money is going into adver advertisements for I for mobile gaming. So multiplayer is coming back to Borderlands on PlayStation 3. Gearbox Software is restoring multiplayer services for the PS3 version of the original Borderlands. The developer announced this today. Or well, actually yesterday or 11 hours ago. The new update for the 2009 game will enable a new matchmaking system for players in North America and Europe. And yeah, it's good. If you still got the game and you have a PlayStation 3 and you want to play some multiplayer, get ready for it. So Call of Duty Zombies presentation will be coming this Wednesday or Thursday depending if you're in Australia. So next, so expect that to be covered in next week's TLDR. So according to this review, the GeForce NVIDIA GTX 960 is the new 11080p champion. So if you're in for a new card, obviously research before you buy a graphics card. Don't just buy it based on that one sentence. Just type, just search for the GTX 960 because apparently it seems good. Because if you're ever buying anything game related, like a new console or new components for your computer. Make sure you do thorough research because the last thing you want to do is plug it in and find out that, oh, whoops, it doesn't support 4K. Oh, damn. So PSP emulator version 1.1 has officially hit the Google Play after finally coming out of beta. Uh, it's called PPSSPP. So type that in Google and you'll find an emulator that's not as buggy as it used to be, but still quite buggy, but it's, 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 it's the best thing you're going to get. Thank you guys for watching this week's episode of TLDR. Stay cool because it is summer now and it's quite hot. And um, if you're in America and you are watching this, wow, that's actually quite amazing. And keep warm because it's quite cold over there, like eight, minus 8 or 25 Fahrenheit, whatever you guys use. So yes, thank you. Comment below or above if this is for some reason YouTube decides to make it above for some reason. And hit that like button if you like. Hit this dislike button if you dislike. And hopefully we'll catch you next week on next week's weekly episodes of TLDR on Tuesday because it alliterates that's the only reason why we call it that and i'm just dragging on now if you're still watching this i'm so amazed so yes and everything else no that's it good